Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today on Customer States What, we have a 2020 Toyota Camry with multiple lights on. The vehicle was towed in. Customer States, they started the car, saw a bunch of warning lights, they popped the hood, they found rodent damage, they shut the car off, and they towed it to the dealer. And here we are today. So, now that we're going to look around, yeah, we got some poo-poos. We got some poo-poos down on top of the transmission. Oh, we got some poo-poos on the intake. And not for nothing, guys, uh, at first glance, I thought this cutout right here was so you can grab the dipstick. Well, no. That's been chewed. This wire's been chewed. That green wire? Well, the rest of it's down there. We're going to scan it and see what uh, else, uh, see what the codes are. But I can tell you this much, we got one, at least one wire we got to repair. Or possibly replace harness. Coolant? Looking a little low there. Uh, I don't even know if they service this vehicle. I'll look, I'm going to have to look through the history. They might not uh, service it through us, but one thing I can say is this car, they're a smoker. And they are a smoker, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, that right there is not tint. That right there is not tint. That's all ash. Ugh. All right, you guys know what comes next. <clears throat> Let's take it up top. So now that we took it up top, I have to make a correction, guys. It is a 2020, but it does not have 4,000 miles. It has almost 40,000 miles. So my mistake. So now that we got it up top, uh, we can see a little abnormal wear happening on the rotors. You can uh, see by the discoloration. Pans are looking healthy. Well, not that much to see because there's an engine splash shield that covers the whole way. We have some abnormal wear happening there as well. Exhaust is looking in good shape. The skid shield as well. Sounds like it got some rocks in it. Looking up there. Oh, oh we got some insulation hanging. I'm wondering if uh, Feifel did that there. Hmm. You got Downs in the background, just acting all Downsy. Let's see how the rear brakes. So we got a little abnormal wear there too, but the pads are healthy. Ooh, it's not that rusty. It's in actually decent condition for a two-year-old vehicle. And I say two years old because uh, the 20s came out in 19. Everything's looking all right under here. Tires are. Looking like they were never rotated. We got damn near full tread here. Damn near full tread, that's about 7, 30 seconds here, 8, 30 seconds here. But then when we go to the front... Yeah, guy, looks like we got about 5, 30 seconds there. We're almost down to the wear bars. How about here? Yeah, same thing. Same thing, looks like these tires were never rotated. <laughs> it's been front wheel drive for 40,000 miles. Well, it's going to be front wheel drive for the rest of its life, but you know what I mean. Alright, let's get involved with that rodent damage. So now that we have the scan tool hooked up and running, we can clearly see we have a Injector 2 harness failure. We have codes for misfires on cylinder 2, we have codes for injector B circuit 2, open circuit, and we have a random misfire code as well. So that's in the engine ECU. Now we're going to scan or read the codes in the other ECUs. Alright guys, ABS light is on because it sees that there's an issue with the engine ECU. It's just giving me a code for engine control system malfunction. So when we take care of the engine issue, we should be able to just clear all the codes out of the vehicle and uh, road test the car if nothing happen. Very good. Well, now that we took it back down, we gave the customer an option. We could either repair the existing wire or we could re 
replace this injector harness right here. And it is replaceable. All you have to do is just disconnect this right here. And then disconnect the four injectors. And then uh, there's probably a number of hold downs. And then you could remove and replace that entire harness. But that harness is a few days out. They want their vehicle. So we're going to repair this here. We're going to have to open this harness up to gain access to known good wire. The same for down here. We have a little bit of wire to work with. So we're going to disconnect that as well from the injector. And uh, we did give them the option to clean all the rat shit up, but uh, unfortunately they declined that. So they like the easy access right here for the oil dipstick, they said. And uh, no, no, they didn't. They just want to do the wire repair. So that's all we're going to do. So we unplugged the harness from three of the injectors. We were able to pull it out a little bit. Giggity. We also unplugged the main connector here that goes into it, so it's completely disconnected from the engine harness. We also opened up the harness a little bit to gain access to some good wire here. Now we've already prepped both sides of this harness, we only need about that much of wire to take place of what 5 hole or 2 holes chewed out. So I made this little guy right here, it's the same gauge wire with some weather tight crimps here once i heat it up uh, the epoxy will come out and it'll become weather tight very good so let's prep this side then we're gonna crimp it onto the harness and then uh, we'll heat it up and uh, i think this will work i really hope so we're, we're gonna find out all right guys so we use some heat shrinks and some heat crimps as you can see, the epoxy has oozed out, and now uh, we are on an angle right here that's going to go right to the injector. It's very good. We'll put a little bit of black tape around that, or electrical tape, to get this uh, chewed loom out of here. And we're going to reinstall it, make all of our connections, clear the light, and go on a road test. And we'll see, hopefully, just hopefully, we'll be alright. All right, now that we're all taped up and installed, you can see the harness has plenty of room. It's not bending or chafing anywhere. Very good, let's hook up the scanner and clear those codes. So guys, even though we cleared the engine ECU and did, well, we actually performed a health check and cleared all the codes out of the car, we still have codes in the ABS, the pre-collision, and uh, the lane departure module because they all saw a DTC within the engine ECU. So they all saw that there was an issue in the engine DTC, or excuse me, in the engine ECU. So what we got to do is, when you perform the health check, you clear all the codes, and you got to road test it just so it does a drive cycle and it sees that there's nothing wrong with the engine. Then all the warning lights will go out and the codes will go from current to historical and everything will be good. Alright guys, if you don't know what to do, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for further content.